Hi and welcome back to another Linux tutorial. So today we're discussing on the file system management and how you can manipulate processes, look at process ID, and what are the startup scripts that we can actually install as well as remove in order to actually control what kind of services we started within a Linux distribution. And of course, in today's case, we'll be looking at the Ubuntu Linux distribution and how we can do all of those system management. So here I have Ubuntu running and I have a terminal open up and we can enter U name. So U name actually tell us the current information on the operating system. So if you do a man lookup on U name and once I hit enter, it can tell you the options that you can look out for, like the kernel, the node name, the kernel release in the machine, the processor, the hardware platform and so on. So what we're going to do is we can actually print out dash A. So this will print out all the information. So what we can do is enter U name dash a and hit enter so this will tell us the linux the version number the operating system they're running on the current versions the architecture and the platform so it's a very useful information to know exactly what you're working on if you're taking over a server an operating system and you want to look at what are the potential limitations or capabilities of the existing server you're working on and the next really important thing is about PS. So PS would actually tell you the running processes within a operating system. So if I do a man PS, so here it says displays information about selection of active processes. So you can actually be able to look out for potential information. So again, if you scroll down, you can actually see all the examples. So we can see a standard syntax like PS-E and so on. So we can even print out security information process they're running as root and likewise and so on so again i highly recommend using manual page every time you're looking up different kind of commands you're using within any linux distributions so here we're going to look at for example we can use ps dash aux so again i want you to take the chance to actually look up on man manual page and look up what does aux stands for in terms of the options that's available to be displayed as part of ps so here, when I enter ps-aux, I can see root user, user that is running. And also on the right side, I can actually see where are the content of the information or the process that's running from. So we can see a lot in the usr slash bean, and we can see some of the startup, and we can see a lot more information from here, and you'll be able to queue off certain process ID from here because you have more information about each of the process that's currently running. So moving forward, of course, uh, what we can do is we can actually look at some process that we may want to kill. So for example, if I click on Firefox and Firefox will be booted up. And of course, when I run PS Ox again, AUX, we can actually see that there is a Firefox command or Firefox process that's running. So when I hit enter, we can actually see that there is a Firefox being run over here. So we can actually try to kill off this process by doing Q and followed by the process ID. So in this case, we got 4018 and we got and we got 4066 and we have 4128 as well as finally on 4169 and once you hit enter, this will kill the process or must be in the process of job IDs. So what we can do is we can screw up and we can just kill each of the process by itself. So again, this will kill off the Firefox process immediately. And of course, another really, really important control or command for Linux server administration or even for end user is actually the service command. So when you hit service, it would actually give you the options and parameters to manage the services running within a operating system of a Linux distribution. So when I enter service, I can actually do a dash dash status all. So this is actually usually the first thing you look at because you want to size up what processes or services are running within an operating system. So once I hit enter, it will tell me all the process that's running directly within the current operating system. So if I do a man lookup on service, and it would actually tell us where we get all this information from. So it runs a system v init script or upstart job in a predictable environment as possible. So what we can do is when we scroll down, we can see the directory in question. So in etc init.d or in etc slash init. So if I right click and if I go into the file structure, I can actually go to etc. So once we're in root, 
we can go to ETC and we can go to INIT and over here we can actually see on INIT and we double click on it again this is the information where all the scripts are held so if I quit from here and I scroll up and I can see all these processes they're running and of course here I can see and I can see all the configuration files on ETC and all the scripts are running directly from here or from INIT.D and of course plus and minus so plus stands for running services and minus means services they're not running currently in the operating system so furthermore for example if I do a service followed by Apache 2 which is a service and I do start so this would actually start up the web application server and it will ask you for your password in order for it to start the service so you authenticate and once you have the service started you can actually do a check again so I can do status on the specific service that could be running on your operating system so here we can see that it is running and active since 34 minutes ago so what you can do is you can go to Firefox and I can enter IF config to see the IP address of the current system and once I have the IP address I can see it's 192.168.1.20 so I can copy this and I can paste it under Firefox and click go so once I do that I can see that we have Apache running directly from the operating system because the service has been opened up and finally because we have all this information we can actually do a shutdown to turn off the operating system directly with the shutdown command so again it will say there will be a shadow shutdown so it will happen in a few more minutes time in fact in a minute it will be shut down on its own so I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial and remember to like share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest technology and thank you for watching